On this week's video, guys, uh, as you can see, I'm still in quarantine. Rolling Rock virus is still devastating the dark void. Uh, can't seem to kick this thing, and I'm trapped in here talking about movies about viral outbreaks until it's over. Uh, so I figured it's time to talk about the mother of them all, the best of them, the King movie, 28 Days Later, and its sequel, 28 Weeks Later. Let's see if we can figure out the timeline of a movie that says its timeline right in the titles. The Rage took over back in 2002 with 28 Days Later by the amazing Danny Boyle and gives us an intro with animal activists accidentally unleashing a rage-inducing virus. They are quickly affected and we see several things. One bite or scratch turns you. The change is pretty much instant and before you transform there's like a blood vomit thing happening. We jump to 28 days later. If there was ever a time for me to say it's in the title, it's right now. Jim here wakes up from a coma several years before The Walking Dead to find a completely empty London. Well, it, it, empty except for Optimus Prime, apparently. He finds this newspaper, and the date flashes on it too quickly, but I found the actual prop newspaper, and it's dated November 10th, 2006. So it's possible that the filmmakers intended this to be several years in the future from when the movie was made. Since we know that things happened very, very fast, the current events are less than 28 days after that, so we're still most likely in November here. Jim encounters several rage-infected people, but is rescued by Miss Moneypenny and Mark, who dies like 10 minutes later, really, really quickly. They end up meeting Mad-Eye Moody and his daughter Hannah, and they have a car with a task disc on the front. Shout out to commenter UK Hihachi for letting me know what these things are called in my Omen video. And it's dated 202, so that means it expires in February of 02, which means it's either really, really expired or that newspaper date was wrong. And I guess if you really wanted to keep that newspaper's November time frame, you could place this in November 1 or 2. Frank is infected by a single drop of rage blood showing just how effective the contagion is and is shot by soldiers. Everyone goes to this house with a team of military, including Dr. Nine or Ten or whatever, now that they messed up that whole system, and then they have their own bub. But it very quickly becomes clear that they're no longer very sane when they try to kill Jim. He manages to escape and save the girls in the middle of an infected attack and one of the greatest uses of a soundtrack in all of horror, although I have to say Jim's plan is a little reckless since there's no way that he could ensure Hannah and Selena wouldn't be intact by infected as well. They escape, but Jim gets shot, and we jump ahead another 28 days. So again, if that newspaper were correct, we'd be in December now, most likely, and we discover that England was isolated in the infection and the rest of the world is okay. Also, the rage infected are dying off due to starvation and dehydration, and contrary to the four or five or 20 alternate endings that were planned or shot, we get a happy ending. It took five long years to make a sequel, and it wasn't until 2007's 28 Weeks Later that we saw a follow-up. And I know I'm going to ruffle some feathers here, because I know that this movie has a pretty solid fan base, and people seem to really like it for some reason, but I'm going to spend the next several minutes just making fun of it like I have a rage virus myself. So Begbie and his wife and some others are hiding out in the middle of the initial outbreak, but are all quickly taken over as a completely empty and silent countryside is then magically filled with about a dozen screaming and angry infected that literally appear out of nowhere. Don abandons Alice, saving himself, and he's the only survivor of the, the, the pretty damn great opening scene, and we're pretty much straight downhill from here. We're told that 15 days later, after the initial outbreak, Britain is quarantined, and 28 days later, it's been destroyed, which is the time frame of the first film. Five weeks later, and we're assuming they're talking about five weeks since the initial outbreak and not five weeks after the previous time frame mentioned, so one week after the first film, the infected all die of starvation. Eleven weeks later, or seven weeks after the first one, the US entered London, and seven more weeks after that, Britain is clear of infection. Six more weeks later, reconstruction begins, and finally 28 weeks later, our sequel commences, so 24 weeks after Jim's adventures and somewhere around about June of 2007, or, or 2002, or three, whichever you want. Hawkeye is here, as is Moria McTaggart, and with the infection cleared, they're getting ready to let people back into England. 
Heimdall shows up and Don is reunited with his kids and he's a janitor at the quarantine station people stay in before they re-enter the city. I'm restating that for emphasis. He's a janitor. The kids somehow manage to sneak into the city. They actually see them enter the city and don't like immediately capture them or shoot them or something. And little baby Poots here has a poster for No Effects is the War on Errorism hanging in her room. So that album came out in 2003, so I think that eliminates the earlier time frame and locks us into the 2006-2007 spot, and we can just write off Frank's car as an old disc. Then they find Alice still alive and uninfected. Her eye clearly shows signs of the virus, and they can see she's been bitten, and she's infected but immune. She is, however, a carrier, so of course they keep her under intense lockdown, right? Because she could start off a whole new infection. So they've got like tons and tons of security. It, 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 it. Oh no, they don't. You'd think that the second that they saw this bite, they'd put every security measure in place possible, but instead, Don, the janitor, just literally walks into her room. There's no one around. No guards, no staff, no one at all. No security measures to keep the janitor out of rooms with potentially viral infected people in quarantine. He kisses her because that's what you do to infected people in quarantine, which then infects him and he kills Alice because just screw this character, I guess. He then manages to attack a bunch of armed guards who don't react at all and further spread the virus. So what's the best avenue to take? Apparently it's to take all the civilians, put them in one room, and lock them in. I mean, there's no way that could go wrong, right? They even turn the lights off for some reason. Well, of course the virus gets in there like literally five minutes later, and soon it's a full-on outbreak. Who could possibly have seen that coming? The military firebomb everything, and they take the time to show Alice's body getting burned up because... Because screw this character! I guess somehow not only does Don survive, but he's able to, I guess, sense exactly where his kids have gone? And leads a pack of infected right to them. But luckily, Mercutio here has a magic helicopter that can become a giant blender when you tilt the blades downward and fly straight ahead instead of, you know, crashing into the ground like it would do if you tilted the blades that way. I know! I know, it's silly to talk about things that are unrealistic in a movie about rage zombies, but come on! Replacement Born dies and then somehow, after driving across the city in a car, Rage Dawn somehow still manages to be here. How did he know where they would be and how exactly did he get there at the same time as them? Not only would he have to be a mindless beast, he would have to have supernatural teleporting abilities. Dawn kills Scarlet, bites Andy, who's also an immune character like his mom, and they kill Dawn and escape in the copter. 28 days go by, and it looks like little Andy is now responsible for virus spreading into Paris, so... It's a great job, kid. I wish they'd shot you earlier. There was also a comic book series considered to be in canon entitled 28 Days Later, The Aftermath, released by Fox Atomic Comics that bridged the gap between the two films. And another simply called 28 Days Later that focused on Selena after the events of the first film. It ran for 24 issues and paralleled the events of the second film, showing the events from her point of view as well. Discussion of a third film 28 months later has been thrown around for like forever, and even as recent as last year, Danny Boyle has talked about having ideas for it. So there you have it, it's just two movies uh, that I kind of wish was more. I would like to see where they take it after this, although personally, and again, I know that a lot of you guys are going to disagree with me. I kind of wish they would ignore the second film. Um, I am not a fan. I know I talked about in my Silence of the Lambs Hannibal Lecter video that that was a, a rather large drop in quality from um, movie to movie. I consider this to be pretty strong as well, too. The first movie is a near masterpiece. I love it. It's a fantastic, beautiful movie. It's a well-told story, it's very artistically told, it has something to say, and it says it very well. The second movie is a crappy zombie movie. I'm, I'm sorry, there's no other way to put it. That's what it is. 
The continuity works pretty well. I mean, it makes most of the sense. I know there's a little bit of age confusion, but I really like the idea of just sticking with that newspaper date and running with it. It makes makes sense to me, so I don't see any reason to not go with that and go with the 2006 to 2007 age gap between the two movies. Well, that's it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I think that this virus infection is finally um, dying down in here, so hopefully next week we will be out of this and things will be normal once again. Um, and I will be out of this quarantine. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below what you thought of it. Uh, let me know if you love 28 days later. Uh, excuse me. Let me know if you love 28 weeks later um, so I can uh, re you know, refer you to a psychiatrist. And uh, let me know what else you thought. Like, subscribe, check out my patrons over here. These guys are awesome. Thank you guys for supporting me. And also, please keep in mind, again, I know I'm making a joke about it, but let's take this whole real-life coronavirus thing very seriously. Let's wash our hands and take care of it. And let's take care of other people. And let's take care of ourselves and others. Let's be nice and handle this really well. In the meantime, I'll see you in a little while for another great video. Thanks, guys. Bye.